Hello in England. We're doing a oil on canvas by a French artist, a Paris artist, a Victorian era Paris artist called Calderon. And uh, the, there are two dimensions to this type of Victorian painting. The first dimension is Calderon is a known artist and he painted many similar scenes. Some people will find that a, a limitation. On the other hand, it is a stable indicator of subject and genuine authenticity. So if you go on the internet, which you should do and you will do, and I did when I bought this picture, is you can go on the internet to see what, the, what prices these things fetch and are being sold for. And the first thing you, you will look for is that signature. That is a very distinctive signature. It's black ink, black paint. And on all of the pictures he, that, are, that, that are available, they all have the same signature, the same font, the same style, manner, size, colorway, place. You don't want an artist, particularly, um, where the signatures vary. They vary from being signed in different colours, different fonts, different styles, and initials, signatures on the canvas, signatures on the, on the back, on the pencil, on a stretcher. You know, it's nice to have an authenticated, genuine, non-gambly non signature. It's nice to have a scene which is a characteristic scene of the artist. So because it's a, a Victorian picture, the scholarly aspects of this are not really what the, what the buyer is going to want to know about. It's not an 18th century picture. It, it is a, a Victorian formulaic commercial furnishings picture. And on the, inter, on the internet you'll see these pictures and they have very slight differences. Some have, for example, no sails. Some are painted 30 yards down the quay. Some are painted from a mile down the quay. Uh, there are different views of, of Venice. But they're, they're, they're of similar size and they're of similar quality and have a similar feel. And they all follow this price band. And this is within the price band, so it's not overpriced. I think it's a very good investment. A uh, Victorian picture, it's a, st it's a stable picture. It's not decaying, it's not got damage as such, it has got pest problems, um, it doesn't look like it needs to be restored. Um, sound is stable. And I think its value is, is sound and stable as well. It's not a, a huge picture, but it's not a, a small trinkety picture. It is um, notable in that it's this artist, and it is notable in that the subject is one of the most popular saleable subjects in the, mar in the, in the market. People like Rome, people like boats and, and ships, people like Venice. It's one of those scenes. Very, very, very good sellers. The painting is semi-impressionistic. Semi it's not an impressionist picture, but when he does the, the trees, he has a method of painting. He has these blinds, these shutters, painted in a certain way. The marble masonry is painted in a certain way. He's using the colours that you see Turner use for sunsets or storms. He's using sunny, balmy, peachy, pinky, hot, exotic colours. The idea here is you're showing an exotic place in the evening, perhaps, or in the dusk. It's warm. It's moody, it's sultry, that's the mood. Gondola, gondoliers, I think they're nets for fishing with floats. I think that is a, gond a gondolier as a ferry. Don't think they're tourist sites is. I think this is a ferry. Uh, St Mark's Bell Tower, Campanile, Doge's Palace, the Wind Lion statue on a pillar, the Bridge of Size is down that, not down that alleyway, down that, uh, Canal, a foreground boy feeding pigeons, early Venetian rudimentary piled wood. So this t the town is going through its transition from a crummy old sh sort of colonial shipping nation into a, into a touristic destination. It's in the transition. Um, townhouses, commercial shipping, the Grand Canal. A big sky. The, 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 the colours used, as I say, are these sultry, dusky, warm, hot colours, but it has been varnished in my view, or shall act in my view, giving it a little bit more yellowness. Do you need to clean the picture? You can clean the picture, it will become slightly brighter, but it won't remove all of these dusky tones. That was the point of the picture, so do you need to have it clean? Someone who's fussy, someone who's very, very rich, who, who wants it to be perfect, will have it cleaned. And they can then attend to some of the problems it has. There's a spot needs colour colouring. There's a spot of paint spill. Um, more more paint spill. There are areas where 
There are tiny defects. You can't see them unless you start, really want to look for them. And some people would want it cleaned. Most of the market would have it cleaned. The dealers will have it cleaned. They'll have it cleaned, they'll put the price up. The auctioneers won't have it cleaned. Most of them are clean now. Um, I personally quite like finding a painting which hasn't been cleaned. If nine out of 10 of them are cleaned, they will, of course, they'll look fantastic, but this hasn't been cleaned. And to a degree, this shellac is a, is a preservative. It can be cleaned in 20 years time. It can be, it can be cleaned in 10 years time. It doesn't need to be cleaned now, not, not perishable as such. Very, very good frame. Contemporary to the picture. Pine with moulded gesso with gold leaf. That's water gilded gold leaf. I think it's had a coat of lacquer or a blonde shellac, which has dulled it down. When it was done, it would have brightened it up, but now it's dried and cured. The shellac has dulled it down. It would have been an extremely bright frame to the point of being garish. And there's no colour differentiation, differentiation between the background and the, and the raised bits. The only differentiation is the, the checkering which in itself is a fairly Venetian thing, but it's not Venetian particularly in this frame. So this frame could be French or Italian or English or Dutch, it doesn't really matter, it's an international baroque issue frame. But it's a very, very expensive frame. If you went to a gallery now and said, please make me a frame this size, you'll be paying £2,000 for that frame, and you'll be waiting six months for it. That's, what, that's my feeling. Very good frame, very good picture. They don't put a frame like that on a, on a crappy picture. They don't put a good painting like that in a, in a crappy frame, excuse my expression. Sometimes you see these, these used as mirror frames now. So, so this frame is a valuable frame. Now, as an ensemble, it, it's, it goes very well. I'm not suggesting for a moment it's divided. Um, quite a simply painted sky, a simply painted water. When the Caravaggio does his Venice, he does white curls on the waves, the tips of the waves. There's a certain way of doing it. This is not that sort of thing. But the perspective is very much after Caravaggio. Uh, Car sorry, Canaletto. Canaletto used perspective. He, his perspective was more, more, more um, brutal. And he would obviously, often use a mirrored side. So you have this pedigree in Venice of, of the painters using keys, building lines, roof lines to, to, to construct their, their pictures. Very simple, but very effective. It gives uh, a correct perspective, a feeling of width and space, openness, grandeur. So beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, what else can I say about the picture? The back is unremarkable. In fact, I will show you the back. There are no obvious problems. The paint, the canvas is tight, not drum-like. There's no sag, there are no, there's no bellying for the back. <clears throat> One canvas, not relined, really no patches, a, an honest pine stretcher with a central brace, an honest pine frame with reinforced corners, unusual and a sign of a good frame. They don't want the frame to move because if the frame moves, the mouldings will crack. That is why traditionally you'll find sometimes on a pine frame in the corners you'll find fabric because they used to put the fabric over the joins before they put the gesso on top so if the wood moved it wouldn't crack. Okay I like the picture it's not a cheap picture of course it's not a cheap picture um, it's, it's been admired this has been added I think I don't think it's original they wouldn't, wouldn't, they wouldn't have put it over the moulding like that that's a metal Victorian calligraphy gilt metal effects sign plaque very hard to restore that unfortunately but it's um it's in keeping it's good um, good investment. There are, there are a number of them on the market and the, and the price, as I say, can be monitored and tracked. I think decoratively, as a picture to look at, that's a real stunner. This is a sort of painting I don't really mind, I don't sell. Um, and and, and you, you know, that, that's a very important aspect of the art market. Um, I know if I keep that for five years, it'll be worth a third more in five years. I mean, it will. I know if I keep it ten years, it'll be worth double. Um, I want someone to buy that who's a collector of his of this artist, or a or someone who who likes Venice, um, and um, I will wait until the buyer comes. I think it's a lovely, lovely thing. And if you said to me, Rob, please go and buy another one, I could find a few, but you'll you'll be paying as much money 
or more because the, the supply is not limitless, unfortunately. Okay, I hope I've got some different dimensions of, of my opinion over on this, this video. Thanks very much for looking.